Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another monster video, so in today's video I am back with another tier list for you guys, specifically for ancestral monsters. Now if you guys were wondering what monster to invest in or what monster to avoid right now uh, in terms of like ancestral monsters because there's like 16 of them quite a lot so the um it's just like the numbers are literally growing so this video will help you guys basically pick um a good monster versus a bad one you know what i mean monster to avoid and then monsters to actually invest in and it's only specifically for um ancestral monsters so i hope you guys are excited if you are make sure you drop a like and subscribe anyways let's go and get started Now, like I said, guys, take a look at this. We've got six, we got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 ancestral monsters all together here. It's insane. You know what I mean? They've been releasing one every era. And so, um, you know what I mean? The numbers are just growing. Soon we'll have 20 um or so but uh yeah we we got quite a lot and um i wanted to make this video to kind of help you guys uh choose uh you know the best ones versus the worst ones things to avoid things to um of course invest in now i'm confident enough to say this um by the way this is actually going to be mainly for team wars and pvp not so much for grandmasters and everything else i don't want to include those okay because i personally don't play grandmasters so i'm not going to give my opinion on that uh but mainly for team wars and pvp um this tier list is basically valid for those two and like i said i'm confident enough to share this information with you guys because team sylvia uh the team that i'm leading uh, of course has reached top 10 before um so you know what i mean these monsters have helped us get to the top 10 and i'm gonna go ahead and basically give you guys my opinion on what i think is the best and what's uh, the worst basically now what I'm, we're going to be using is this tier list maker as always i'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with what this is because i've used it quite a lot before i'll go ahead and actually zoom in a actually that's too much zooming in right here this is perfect so yeah um basically to kind of give you guys an idea of what this is um as you can see i've already wrote it so this is going to be best of the best i'm going to put all the best of the best monsters here so for example if i put this up here that means invest in it you know what i mean um go ahead and go crazy uh and then if i were to put um this monster right here that means you know what I mean? The monster is really good. It's amazing, but it doesn't deserve the first spot. Uh, and then if I put someone like JJ over here, that just means no, don't don't invest in it. Literally, I literally just put no, don't do it. This one, maybe, you know what I mean? And then, of course, good enough, but you want to invest in these two first. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started, guys, without further ado. So the first monster that I want to throw in there, let's just get this out of the way. This monster just doesn't deserve any spot. Like, if if there was a something below no, I would probably put it. Actually, that's too mean. Let me let me let me stop. But I feel like the only times I've seen this monster being used, especially for team wars, is when a player either doesn't have a good monster for the nature category, like a better monster than than uh, this one. You know what I mean? They tend to just use this just to fill it in. Um, another reason would be maybe rune wise. For example, if this monster, if I had this monster versus a mythic monster and let's say rune and level wise it's different like this monster's higher level and higher runes versus the other ones it's only like level 120 130 with like mid runes i'm like of course we gotta go with this you know what i mean just to fill it in it's better but that's really about it just to fill the gap i feel like this monster is just built to fill the gap there's a lot of other monsters that are better uh, especially for uh you know the nature category mythic monsters for example there's gob's art if for those of you guys that have gob uh the you know the witch monster that has block resurrection it's nature monster that one i would highly recommend investing in that one over this monster even though it's a mythic i know this is like an ancestral video but just wanted to kind of throw it out there but anyways guys so the next monster that i want to invest or i would recommend you guys investing in let's start off with jj okay so jj ever since this monster got released man it has been a blast using him you know what i mean i personally really enjoy using this monster but at the same time when i go up against it i'm i have a little bit of difficult time uh it depends not in team wars but but uh, pvp but there's times in team wars as well especially rune difference that's really about it like this monster is easy to beat but when the enemy has high level runes and like relic wise not so much but especially runes if let's say i'm using my level 11s or 12s on jj and the enemy has level 14s and those 14s let's say our speeds and strength and they are able to outspeed me i'm like oh man i gotta figure out a way to actually beat this it's gonna be a little bit difficult letting that this monster get a turn in it's gonna be a huge mistake if you don't have a you know what i mean a play if uh, like a strategy in mind that would 
would work out. Because if you let this monster get a turn in with level 14 runes, you're literally just... You should literally just pray. And you either pray or you die. Literally, in battle, it's it's over. You know what I mean? This monster is amazing. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you guys already know. Um, but whenever you get the chance, of definitely invest in. This will be probably the first ancestral you want to invest in if you need a good attacker if you if you want the best attacker in my opinion jj is the best attacker right now arguably i mean a lot of you guys probably will say otherwise but i, I think jj deserves the first spot for sure uh but moving on another great monster i'm gonna throw out there is most likely primarian now primarian is amazing it's fantastic and i think this is one of the best of the best you know what i mean um i would highly recommend investing in this monster if you need a denier he is the one another thing is he can be a supporter as well for example you can literally run this monster full speed. You turn transfer over to one of your other monsters. They could go nuts. Like this monster would make Madam Fusion be usable again because you turn transfer over to Madam Fusion. Madam Fusion just clears up the path with PER trade tables. Turn transfers over. You know what I mean to an, your attacker or denier, and you just go crazy. You know what I mean. So a great monster, very fun to use. I personally need to max this monster out soon. I don't know why I'm not, um, but this monster has the potential for sure. Now the very next. Uh, monster that I want to kind of uh, throw in there would be Genesa. You guys know Genesa, you know what I mean? It's uh, one of the best um, it's out there that still exists. Uh, because of the, blo uh, not block resolution, but because of the um, ant spation, I feel like ant spation is huge for this monster, but not just that, the fact that he could, she could just deny and apply a bunch of negative status effects, it's insane to me. So her negative status effects help out her, um, you know, well, it's not really denial. I was going to say those total blinds are denials, but it's not. It's just negative satisfact. Uh, but, you know what I mean? Sometimes tortures with the na nanovirus and stuff like that. It's just, it's insane. It's pretty good. I would I would highly recommend investing this monster if you guys need a, a denier on your team or like a controller, basically. This would be the one. Now, the next monster that we're going to be talking about is the one and only tideborn i'm sure a lot of you guys are actually familiar with this one i have made um a couple of videos on it and also a short uh you know and that's a short title <laughs> i i went ahead and mentioned like one getting one of the best ancestral monsters or something like that and some of you guys were like no it's not well let me explain to you guys this monster is amazing okay i i personally think this monster um actually deserves either best of the best or amazing you know what i mean so it's it's really in between i might actually go ahead and adjust this later on down the video so if you guys um want to watch until the end absolutely i would highly recommend doing it because i might actually change my mind about one of these monsters and i might throw them down here or something now what makes this monster so good is you know the fact that it has block resurrection the block resurrection is probably the best part for this monster if if he didn't have that i don't think a lot of players would really use this monster you know what i mean he's being used because of the block resurrection um and also the fact that he has healing abilities he has a bunch of denials removing evasions you know random mega controls and stuff like that it's insane so uh, definitely a really good monster to invest in highly recommend um again it's it's either i'm gonna put it up here or i might put it up here uh down the later on uh near the end of the video continue watching because i'll most likely maybe change this up there and put it up there and maybe some other monsters too now the next monster i want to um kind of talk about is the one and only kirk moonwalker so kirk moonwalker is a great monster you know what i mean he can be a threat for sure you know what i mean he he, he could definitely be a threat but does it deserve the best of the best or amazing i personally think he deserves the amazing spot um only thing that i don't like about this monster is the fact that it doesn't have immune to torture i feel like immune to torture is just huge especially for a monster like this he gets a turn in if you don't have supporters on your team removing that or like giving you that torture immunity he's gonna tank that and he's gonna die like he dies very quickly due to tortures that's that's one of the things i, I personally don't like about this monster but overall he's actually really good you know what i mean the fact that he has a bunch of uh you know different element skills a metal water removing evasion and dealing so much damage um like this monster has counter it literally counters jj it counters everest um who else there is i believe diablis as well Primarion, you know what I mean? And like a bunch of random ancestral monsters, even Gracial, you know what I mean? Gracial as well. So I would say it deserves the amazing spot for sure. So I'm going to put it over here. Now, the next monster that I'm going to talk about is let's just talk about someone random here. Grifania. You guys remember when this monster got released back then? You know what I mean? Grifania, come on. Uh, this monster was amazing. A lot of players were using it. Now everybody using JJ. If JJ wasn't there, I feel like players would either be using this, 
Kirk Moonwalker or somebody else. I'm going to put this in good enough for now. I might actually change it later on down the line, but you know what I mean? Just also another thing is if you see a like a um, row of like this, for example, if I put these three monsters and then I put these two, that means of course, invest in these three first, then go down the line and go invest in one of these two. And then you just kind of go down, you know what I mean? Um, so that's the, that's what I would recommend you guys doing. You know what I mean? Um, just focusing on completing the first row, maxing them out, and then go to the second row, max them out, and then so on. But the next monster that I'm going to throw out there would be um, Gracial. This monster is amazing. I personally really enjoy using this monster. Has a uh, great um, awakening. I personally like the awakening a lot. I know a lot of players, it's like controversial. Like, not a lot of players actually enjoy the awakening. I feel like uh, they're like, you know, it could be a lot better. I personally don't use it for what it does really like removing positive status effects to deal damage to the enemies i know that part kind of sucks but i mainly use it for the megaton the fact that this monster gets a damage mirror megatons it's just insane it's pretty good so i personally really like that and he becomes really tanky you know what i mean uh giving it even one life and two team speed or just like triple team speed mutated with life this monster could get very tanky and could definitely definitely um help you out in battle i personally really like it um of course it doesn't deserve best of the best um that's for these three um and then maybe some other monsters but i would say he's amazing definitely um do invest now the next monster that we're going to talk about would be uh diablis so diablis um this one in particular i actually like it but i don't think this deserves the best of the best what i really enjoy about this monster a lot of players do as well is the immune to death countdown area that trait it, it helps really like a lot because uh, a lot of players still use ural you know what I mean? So when they use Ural, 90% 90, 90 of the time, they tend to run the death count on talent. Um, so when they do, this monster just counters it and boom, you know what I mean? Just like that. Um, you can't really apply that. Another thing would be, you know, just the denials ability, denials and stuff like that. The speed is also really good. So the only thing it lacks is, of course, PER. I feel like if this monster had PER, it'd be nice, but it, it doesn't, unfortunately. I am going to say, I'm going to put it on amazing for now. Uh, the only reason is, is, of course, Primerion deserves the top. If we were comparing Primerion versus Diablis, I would rather go with Primerion. You know what I mean? It just has a lot of pros versus um, this monster. Let's go ahead and talk about another monster here we got uh tire stormbringer now stormbringer i would personally put it in maybe you know what i mean um like i wouldn't put it in no i would probably just put it in maybe because if you finish all these other monsters and there are no monsters to work on then maybe you can go ahead and start working on this and then down the line you could probably do this for the collection purposes so i personally wouldn't really put it over here i'll just put it over here uh it's got you know really good thunder damaging skills but it does lack a lot of other things that these other monsters have so for that reason i'm gonna put it on maybe now the next monster that i'm also going to mention is calrock uh now i know a lot of players tend to use this monster for coliseum coliseum is not available again if you guys check right now in the game it's out i'm not sure why but they might be working on it and they might return it but anyways this video is mainly for team wars and, and pvp i would say because of that i'm gonna put it on maybe but if this was for coliseum this monster would probably appear literally because of how great the monster is but right now i'm just gonna put it on maybe because of course i don't think it's like the worst of the worst but it definitely isn't good or amazing or best of the best you know what i mean so i'm just gonna put it over there for now the next monster i would say is bashir bashir for the water category i'm gonna put it over there i'm gonna say good enough or am i it's in between amazing and good enough this monster used to be amazing it used to be best of the best but it got a huge nerf like social point did him dirty like seriously uh, or else if, if it still was the way it is, I feel like players will definitely use this a lot more. But now if you take a look at PvP, not a lot of players are actually using this monster. Um, you would see it here and there. You would see it on PvP as well, but or, or sorry, Team Wars. Uh, but there are other monsters, like for example, Tideborn. For the water category, 9 out of 10 times, players would rather use Tideborn over Bashir. Unless, let's say, they already have you know supporters on the other two end, and then to fill in that final element or book, they're going to use Bashir just for the attacker. Now, the next monster we're going to talk about, um, let's actually throw in the CB2 monster. I personally, here's the thing. I have seen the skills, um, and I have seen, you know what I mean, the... <laughs> let, me, let me save that for last, actually. I'm not going to... I'm not going to go on with that yet. But um, let's do Zyron. Zyron, I would say personally, I think I think this monster is amazing. But I don't think it deserves best of the best. The reason why I said amazing is because... So 
the rain and positive aspects helps out a lot you know what i mean running this monster full speed or team speed especially full speed would be better or a mix of speed and team speed basically but as long as it takes in the first turn so you apply that you know what i mean and then you could have an attacker like jj going in next or another monster but basically they could get a triple damage they could get evasion dodge area whatever it is it throws off the enemy it's really good for team wars pvp as well but especially team wars and this monster is just a great pair up with an attacker especially jj because it has damage boost it has any ER abilities as well it's really cool it can help awaken jj a lot faster especially with that one relic that uh there is as well um, that helps this monster awaken faster i feel like this is a really good mix like a, it's got a pretty good chemistry together the next monster we have is in kid now in Kato, I personally think this monster is good. You know what I mean? It's it's good enough. You could you could definitely invest in it, but I would say invest in these monsters first, and then you can go down the line and invest in this. Um, for the Earth category, there are players that actually tend to run this monster uh, for Team Wars, um, but then there's of course Ural and there's King Adam. They'd rather use that monster. You know what I mean? This monster has trade disable abilities and stuff like that, but it lacks a bunch of other things. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it on good enough. Again, a lot of players have different opinions. You know what I mean? I personally believe it deserves um, that middle spot right there. The next monster we're going to be talking about is Everest. I personally really enjoy Everest. I think this monster is phenomenal for the light and dark category. This monster is just amazing. You know what I mean? It, it, there are other ancestrals that do counter him, but overall, great resurrector. I, I personally use him more for denial and uh, in resurrection you know what i mean that's basically his role but he could be used as an attacker as well um you know what i mean so this monster could literally fill the gap in team wars or pvp a lot of players still use it and it's amazing i personally do recommend investing in it uh also i really like the the fact that he could come back with the res you know um sn there's uh, of course his own sword which is really good i really like that and his awakening is just so easy to awaken all you have to do is attack three times with evasion and he has a bunch of evasion skills so and some of them last multiple turns you know what i mean so it's really good i personally think it's going to be best of the best it deserves it deserves that category so definitely um the very next monster we are going to be talking about last but not least we have Sabido the apex now I, I know a lot of players um actually don't enjoy don't like this monster at, at all reason for that is because it lacks so much especially the ultimate have you guys seen the awakening like i'll show you guys in a second okay let me go to olympus let's see here uh first player's not using it of course second player not using it third not using it so let me just pick a random here oh there we go okay so somebody's finally using it now they're running at team speed of course it's supposed to be an attacker right um this monster has dodge area immune to blind um immune to possession Im cold immunity which i you know i could i'm definitely okay with random torture traits are actually good i would say definitely i would say there's nothing wrong with the traits now here is where it gets bad all right if you take a look at the awakening this is the most important part for an ancestral monster and what he does is remove positive side effect trade tables and vulnerability are you kidding me come on like we expect more, of course, you know what I mean? Now, his skills are not bad, you know what I mean? Like, for example, you have an extra turn with Toxin, which is one of the most OP, um, one of the most OP tortures, if not the most OP torture right now in the game, you know what I mean? Then you have some more damaging skills that comes with tortures and stuff. Uh, a thunder damage, of course, with against water would be really nice. Uh, and removing positive side effect as an attacker is cool, that's, that's actually huge. But, like, I don't know, man, like, there's just... That awakening really throws off the, this monster or else this monster could have been a lot better. I feel like that's the only thing really, the awakening because of that. We're going to decide where we're going to put this monster, okay? Now besides that, of course, you got sword and mask, which is actually pretty good for an attacker, but I would have really liked a, like a revival, but that's okay, you know what I mean? For example, JJ, he's still phenomenal even without an SN. But this is actually pretty good for an attacker. I do like the relic slots. But if I had to, of course, rank this monster, I would personally put it in good enough, if not amazing. Between those two, again, it's just the awakening that really throws this monster off. Like, if that wasn't there, I would personally probably, you know, put it a little bit higher. But because of that, I'm going to put it in good enough. Now, let me just over overall just look through again to see if I need to make any adjustments. Now, of course, best of the best monsters. I'm not changing anything over there. The, those four monsters I'd highly recommend investing in. If I had to, um, for example, go in order who to invest in first um of course i like attackers so i'd probably put jj first i'll 
you know go with that i'd probably do either primarian or Genesa. Genesa is a really um you know huge uh like it's, it's very popular big option so somebody would probably choose this over this but then you know eventually everest because of the um resurrection skills the fear abilities evasions and stuff like that it's really cool uh pretty good with ural as well or instead of ural you could use that monster and then an amazing amazing category it really depends are you looking for attacker if you're looking for attacker I'll probably put Kirk first, you know what I mean? Uh, Tideborn would be really good for supporter, you know, block resurrection is huge. Deniers, you know what I mean? Again, there's there's better deniers we got here, of course. Um, so that's why this is just down here instead of putting it up there. Um, so you guys get the point. Uh, Zandi, again, supporter, you know what I mean? Gray seal for tank. Uh, and then these monsters, I'm not really going to change. I'm just going to leave them as is, especially these three. I'm going to leave them here too. Again, with this, this is like a 50-50. I might put it up there or I might put it up here, but it's just the awakening that really throws off this monster. I'll probably just put it over there. Um, but again, if I were to do this in, in order, the top row seems okay. That's fine. This it's up to you. You can go ahead and do a mix and match with whoever you want to go with uh, after you finish ranking these four. And then here, you want to do this first. I would probably do Bashir before these two. And then maybe Grafania last. And then Inkido here. And then you can choose between one of these two. And this is, of course, your last option. But this right here, guys, is what I think of the current Monster Gens, um meta category for ancestral monsters. If I had to rank it, this would be it right here. So I'd highly recommend uh, investing it in this uh, sort of way. You know what I mean? Going for the f f first four first and then going down to amazing all those five monsters once you finish all those max them all out then you gotta you just move on to good enough and so on so you guys get the point but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed today's monster video if you guys did enjoy and found it helpful please drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this as well if you guys want to make any changes let me know what that is in the comments down below anyways thank you all so much for watching i'll see you next one peace out